Hey y'all, and welcome back to the Mr. Maple Show. Today we're here with part two at the North Carolina Arboretum. We're discussing some of the bonsai exhibits here in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm Tim, this is my brother Matt. We do MrMaple.com, a mail order business out of Western North Carolina. You should definitely go to MrMaple.com and check us out. If you haven't watched part one yet of the North Carolina Arboretum's bonsai exhibit, make sure to stop and go check that out. And here we're gonna continue on with part two. Like, subscribe, and share. And if you like this kind of content, let us know in the comments section below. We greatly appreciate you as viewers. Hey, here's one we offer frequently on Mr. Maple. This is an item you'll see on our Fun Flower Friday sometimes. So we definitely wanted to stop and get this Satsuki Azalea on camera for you and show you it in an amazing bonsai format. Satsuki Azaleas are often used for bonsai because of their dense, compact habit. It makes it really easy to train and shape in that dense, compact form. Satsuki Azalea Wakabisu is a fantastic plant. We use a lot of our photos from John O'Lee, who's trained Wakabisu in some amazing shapes and some amazing forms. And we've got a lot of other people who've allowed us to use photos of their bonsai, of Wakabisu, and other Satsuki azaleas that we offer on Mr. Maple. This is a really cool plant. The cool things about a Satsuki azalea is they bloom during the summer. And you see the buds just starting on this plant right now. And so here in a few weeks, this plant will have blooms on it in this bonsai fashion, really giving you a lot of unique interest in its shape, but also in the blooms. Yeah, we love Wakabisu. If you don't see it currently on our website, you can always go and get notified when it's back in stock. Uh, won't certainly show up looking exactly like this one. You'll have to recreate this piece of art on your own. Uh, we send out some beautiful one gallons though that make excellent starters for bonsai. So here we've got another bonsai that's created a scene from Western North Carolina with some native hemlocks, some native Acer rubrum, and some other plants to really play on our native scenes. And there's a lot of really great bones out here. You just slowly go down through here and look. We've got a Chinese cork bark elm. I love those cork bark types because it really makes the tree appear much older than they really are. Especially out in the landscape or as a bonsai and a container plant, that's a great way to have something appear much, much older. Here we've got a winged elm, and you'll see that corky fissured bark on this as well. That also just gives it, it plays with that age, helps make this tree appear very, very old. There's a lot of signs here at the Arboretum that say, how old is this bonsai? We don't really know because a lot of these don't have records. And even if this is a younger plant, it doesn't matter about its bonsai quality. It's the essence and the painting and the portrait that these bonsai are creating. We've got an American Barberry bonsai right here. Right down here, we've got this amazing pot that gives that windswept look with a Carolina hemlock that just makes this tree really something unique and special. But you can just see that windswept habit on this Carolina hemlock that just makes it really special. And you can see how this American hornbeam almost represents an older, almost like lightning struck oak tree in the area. And these rubrums kind of make that cove feel to it. When these Acer rubrums go to a fall color of that bright fiery red that you get with our native Acer rubrum, this really recreates a lot of the scenes that you see in here in the Appalachia. So here we have a piece called Swamp Giant. Now this one's recreating a little bit more of that local landscape from a little further east or a little further south. This one you might see in that low country of South Carolina or eastern North Carolina with those marsh areas. And it kind of encapsulates a little bit of what you might see in that kind of landscape. Here they've got water elms along the outside. And in the center, they have not a bald cypress, but a pond cypress, which has a little more a unique foliage and has a little more adapted to weather situations. Hence the name Swamp, Swamp Giant where you see this very old pond cypress that really just gives that appearance of that one giant out there in the swamp. Back here with another grafted Japanese maple for you for bonsai. Uh, 
This one maybe uh, Crimson Queen doesn't quite look like Crimson Queen. We think it looks more a little bit more reminiscent of something like an Ava Shadari. Yeah, and as you see here, you, you can see this it was a low graft. It's grafted about four inches up. But again, they've allowed that flare to continue down to the roots to create that butchers root system and a way to sort of hide that graft mark, but also add to the bones at the same time, giving something special here in the Arboretum with a red lace leaf Japanese maple as a bonsai. This one's a little bit smaller for bonsai, so we've zoomed in to kind of give you a more close look at this one. The title of this one is Mount Mitchell, and that's a very popular mountain here in Western North Carolina. It's one of the highest peaks. I think it's the highest peak in the entire state. But what I love about this is it's a scene you may see there at Mount Mitchell, especially with some of those protruding dead branches there you see, but also the rhododendron, the native flora. A lot of the smaller plants here are being used to recreate kind of that exact landscape you see as you get into that Mount Mitchell horizon. And they did a really, really did a great job here using the dead plants, but also the white spruce to encapsulate a lot of the, the vertical things that you see there at Mount Mitchell. And it really encapsulates exactly what you see and if you're a local and you've been to Mount Mitchell I mean this is as if someone painted a picture of what's happening there. So another mass planting or forest style bonsai here this one uses hornbeam and chinzan azaleas to kind of create that native habitat look. Here they've used that dwarf satsuki azalea chinzan we offer that from time to time on Mr. Maple as that rhododendron, natural rhododendron that we have growing here in the Western North Carolina. It gives you that same color on the bloom, but use it in a dwarf compact manner with the small leaves. Chinzan is a perfect replacement in painting this picture that you see in this bonsai. Jumped in here for a wide shot of three more exciting bonsais as we're working our way down the landscape here. There's some really unique ones. We have this meta sequoia. That's a dawn redwood all the way over the far end closer to Tim. Uh, we do some really fun cultivars of dawn redwood that'd be excellent for bonsai. This one looks to be straight species. You could also incorporate something like Sherman's Nordlich or Dawswood Tawny Fleece to put some different colors and flair into this style thing. Dawn redwoods are actually very uh, rare to see actually in the wild. They found one valley years ago in the 1940s, 1950s, and they took a collection from that and brought Dawn redwoods to the United States. All selections originally came from that one collection until recently the Dawes Arboretum went back and did another collection of Don Redwoods at another location that they'd found in a valley in China. They're extremely rare in the wild, but in cultivation they've become more and more popular for nurseries and for people who propagate them. And seeing one done as a bonsai is really cool because you get the essence of seeing a really, really old tree out there in the landscape. So as we stroll through this bonsai exhibit, there's some excellent plants along the way. It's a well-maintained, beautiful garden. There's some butterflies and fun plants going through here. This whole bonsai exhibit is on a hillside, meticulously maintained, and there's such an amazing area and platform for these bonsai exhibit that it really makes you feel like you're out there in the landscape and garden. This is such a fun place. If you're out here in Western North Carolina, you've got to check out this bonsai exhibit. Check out this uh, Pinostrobus Biltmore Blue right here beside us. Really fun conifer.
So here we have something that some of y'all may have done at your own home. This is a fairy garden. They, what they've done is they've taken a bonsai and turned it into a fairy-like garden. This one's actually even called Aunt Martha's Magic Garden. And it's because we've got this garden setting. We've got a bench right here and some amazing plantings around, but with a bonsai in the middle that has this amazing windswept fashion. Really, really cool. Something really, really unique to do. Wow, what an amazing bonsai exhibit. This exhibit has put together traditional forms of bonsai, American styles of bonsai that recreate what we see here in the wild, and have really added a whole lot on a landscape, on a hill, on a mountain, the entire bonsai exhibit that's pleasant to go and enjoy and watch and see on the hillside itself, mm -hmm. and then to see each of the bonsais within that landscape. It's pretty amazing. Hey, I'm no bonsai expert by any means, but I can appreciate this and really enjoy it. Uh, something, certainly something I don't claim to be. So if you hear me saying something wrong in the comment section below, we're definitely not bonsai experts, but we definitely have an appreciation for them. One of my favorite things about this garden were the bonsai that recreate scenes I've seen in Western North Carolina. And I think that really gets to the essence of what bonsai was about traditionally. So it might not be the traditional style of every single aspect, but I love that it's encapsulating that, that scene that you see there in the native landscape. And it incorporates some of my native landscapes here in Western North Carolina, so that gets me really excited. We really appreciate you watching this video. Make sure if you like this video, to share this with your gardening friends. I'm sure they'll love this as well, and they may want to come out and visit this amazing bones exhibit here in Western North Carolina. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, sign up for our weekly emails on Mr. Maple, and thanks so much for watching. Remember, the best way to, uh, to help out this YouTube channel is by shopping on MrMaple.com. So make sure to go to MrMaple.com and check them out. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.